After my unfortunate incident with my other Nexus P uh, and trying to replace the screen, which uh, obviously didn't work out so well, I've got some of those uh, bits and pieces still lying about to remind me of my failure. But uh, I need it as work. I need it for work. So what I've done is I went ahead and bought a new one. Um, this time I got the warranty. So that way it'll only cost me $100 instead of $449. Um, fortunately, it just went down because the, uh, the, the more updated one, the Pixel, has come out. I've decided not to go with the Pixel um, for reasons that... Uh, Mostly, I just don't need it. There are certain features that I would like to get, but I don't think they're worth the premium yet. So this, I'll, I'll probably run with this for two years, and then I'll get whatever comes after the Pixel. At least that's the plan, as I am, I because of the cost, I went ahead and did a financing too. So the insurance is $5 a month, and um, I'm financing this uh, also through Google. So this is the box that it comes in. It came in just a FedEx. I did it overnight. You know, branded uh, Nexus box isn't that fancy. Um, the packaging is really frustration-free. You know, they've they've definitely taken that to another level. We got a little card here with uh, little instructions as to uh, what they would like you to do. So the little P, that's nice. Okay, there's the power button. There's the volume button. Power's down there, guys. That's where the USB is, and the fingerprint reader, and where the NFC chip is. Apparently, it's up in the in that quadrant. Uh, they provided a USB, a standard USB to USB-C and a USB-C uh, cable in, entirely here. USB-C on both ends, mail, mail, mail. And, of course, they would say, that, hey, you need, to, you need to plug it in first for a little while, let it charge up to full, and then, of course, turn it on. Um, it does not come, when it's in this package, this is my second go around with this, when it's in this package, they... Um, they do not include a SIM chip in there, so they've got a little card that comes with it. And <laughs> though they have the handy little ga gadget here, which if you remember from the other episode, I will show you what that looks like. Um, something kind of like this. This actually came with the iFixit kit. I'll uh, put it on the phone so you can see its uh, shape and everything. It's a handy little device, but what they did was they actually, uh, they included a paper clip, a nice little green paper clip. I'm not sure why the, the color, um, high tensile steel. This is, uh, this is the tray, the SIM tray from my other one. So the nano SIM will, will fit right into there, right into that side. So I've already inserted the one here. It just pops off a, pops off a credit card style thing and put it in there. Uh, that way you guys don't get to see my serial numbers and, uh, and be able to hijack my phone since this is going online. I also went ahead and powered it up. So it's waiting for, uh, for input from us there. And I took the serial number tag off the back here. So I, I'm going to endeavor to keep as much information private as possible. Oh, look, you can see yourself. Hey, look, I'm taking a selfie of your, you guys. This is the crane cam. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay. <clears throat> That's clever. All right. So other things that are in the box. Uh, we have... Uh, oh, wait. There it is. There's the tool right there. I stand corrected. Let me take this out right now so that I don't uh, don't forget about it. This... Ooh. ooh this is nice. The guys at uh, Huawei did a good job making the tool. The SIM removal tool. These are all pretty much the same... Same deal. I don't know why Google decided then that they needed to just provide a paperclip if that one was already going to be in there. But I'm going to put this over here with my other iFixit tools. Uh, I believe this is uh, regulatory notices, safe, yeah, safety and warranty information in a little, little tiny book. I believe they provide a one-year manufacturer warranty. Um, let's see. Limited warranty on page 10. Uh, let's find that out right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, they've got a USA, uh, USA recycling program. I probably need to do that with my old one. And by participating in this program, limitation of liability. Oh, okay. Actually, you know, I should probably call them 
at the Huawei Technical Support Center and see what they can do about my other phone entirely. They might actually be able to replace it. Um, maybe, maybe. It would not be bad at this point to have a uh, have a backup. For the things that I do, I kind of need need to have backups around me. Okay, Huawei Device USA is not responsible for any consequences related to your failure to delete personal information by returning your mobile, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. And when it, I had the other device, it was actually powered up, even though I couldn't access the screen because it was broken. I went ahead and did uh, did the, the Android device manager and sent a erase command. Everything was already encrypted on the phone as well, which, by the way, on this phone, uh, I'm, I was running full disk encryption and not having any performance uh, hits at all. So we're at that point where if you're getting a modern phone, you shouldn't have to worry about encrypting it, slowing it down. It should just go, and why not? Just do it. Uh, there's there's no point not to. Um, looking to see how long the warranty... Ah, there it is. Warranty period. Coverage under this warranty is limited to the following time periods. Let's see if I can bring you guys closer. Not the, Ah, there it is. Okay. Phone and tablet, a period of 12 months from the date of purchase. Watch and wearable. Okay. There you go. So 12 months, it is a one-year warranty, as I thought. I'm going to save this, though, because it does have the phone numbers for Huawei USA, which I, I'm impressed with their company so far. It's pretty good. Pretty darn good, all the things that they're doing. So here is the USB-C to standard USB. It's so cute. It's a tiny, tiny little cable. Let me uh, get you guys back up here. There you go. Okay, so it's a it's a tiny little cable. This would be a, a foot long. Not sure how many centimeters that would be, because uh, here in the United States we we don't do that whole metric thing. Okay, <clears throat> but I don't need it right now. And a much longer USB C to USB C, which is always good. It's nice to have these. There was a bit of a challenge getting uh, proper USB C cables for a while there. Um, because they were allowing too much voltage to travel to or from the device. Because with USB-C, you can actually charge other devices. So I could I could plug in from here and charge another another device um, off that battery. But, oh, geez, why would you bother? And here's another fast charger. And this is the Qualcomm Fast Charge 3 standard. Uh, let me see what, uh, what it says here. Come on, focus. Focus, camera. Focus? Can you focus? Oh, well, almost. Come on. Come on. Nice camera. Focus, focus. Okay, that's probably about as good as it's going to get, which is sad because really I wanted to be able to read it on the camera. Um, actually, that's fairly close. Okay, so I have to take it off camera and actually take my glasses off. Oh, jeez, getting old sucks. Okay, it says... Switching power adapter, of course. Model number. Oh my gosh, it doesn't actually tell the tell the voltages. I thought the last one did. Maybe my last one does. Because I've got another one. Ta-da! These two. I wonder if there's any difference. Oh. Oh, there is a difference. Well, the text on the old, old one's a heck of a lot easier to read. Output, there it is. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is there. Output. I'm in the shadows. Uh, five volts up to three amps. So the, the Qualcomm 3 standard has, has done some, some crazy things over time here. Let's see if maybe this one will focus. Or not. Um, yeah, but it's, a uh, it's outstanding. The, uh, the abilities of the Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm as a chip manufacturer to build this, uh, the charging technology. It's really impressive. It's really very impressive. So actually I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll plug it in. Um, just so you guys can see, <laughs> see the USB C. Uh, I have a fancy, uh, fancy angle adapter. Um, so let's see here.
Not bad, not bad. I need to see about this auto-focusing of this camera. Let's see if I can trick it. No. I have to work on that. Okay. But then the nice thing about uh, USB-C is that it doesn't matter which way we turn it. It can be up and down, left, right. Doesn't matter. Um, so I'll just put it in this way. And that should wake up the phone a little bit. So here we go. Okay. Nothing else to see here. Nothing to see here, folks. No weird, uh, weird Easter eggs or anything like that. So it's just a, it's a very frustration-free packaging. It's nice, nice to see everything work for a change. Uh, let's see if I can get a better, a better angle. Um, come on. Okay, I guess that's going to be about as good as it is. Um, Cameras don't like to take pictures of other screens, really. So, uh, welcome, United States English emergency call, because you can always make a phone call with that. It's already attached on LTE. I am with uh, Google Fi. Um, let me see. Yeah, I've got the old, uh, the old SIM, so you can see how big it is. It's tiny, tiny little thing. That's the Fi logo for Google. Okay, come on. Come on, camera. Doot, doot, doot. Maybe you need to get a better camera just so I can do things like this. Okay. We'll see about that much, much later. I'm spending too much money this season. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I will choose my network. And you guys can't see that. No, no, no. There we go. Okay, so it is now checking the connection after it did that, and it's doing software update. Uh, let's see. If you use another Android device, you can quickly copy your current setup to this Nexus 6B. You know, I did this with, um, with my last phone, and it was really slow. Oh, there we go. I can do it in portrait mode. Maybe that'll be better. Yeah, there we go. You guys can see that. I can see that. I think. Mostly. That'll work. All right. So if you use another advice, uh, you can quickly copy your current setup to this Nexus 6B. I don't want to do that. I think I'll just do, do standard. So, But it did work. Uh, it was just NFC to NFC, back to back on the phones. And it went bloop. And then it just started pulling the cloud and pulling everything down from the, from the Google account. So it was very fun. Next. Okay, that, that is me. So apparently uh, there is some registration information because I didn't have that a chance to put this in. So very similar to the way, and by the way, yeah, feel free and email me. That's that's my, my very public address for everything. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't send any of this information in, but I know that Amazon, whenever they send something like, um, you know, a Kindle, for instance, it's already registered to your account. So I guess they, they have already done that uh, in my stead because I bought this directly from Google Fi because um, I knew that's what I was going to use it on and I wanted to keep it simple. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, password. Oh, let me do a password here. Doo, doo, doo. Don't invite hackers to give me too much. Right? Okay, and then of course by signing, you agree to the terms and services uh, of the policy, blah, 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 of course. Otherwise I don't get to play. If I don't do that, I don't get to play. Of course I wanna play, come on. All right, automatically back this device up. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, and you can probably hear my other phone saying, hey look, uh, something is registered to your account and signed in as you, are you sure that was you? Uh, let Google's location services, yeah, yeah, I. I yeah, I want all that. Um, some people may not, but, you know, what's good for you is uh, not necessarily good for me or anybody else. So you do you, I'll do me. So we're activating Project Phi. Okay. Yes, uh, this deactivates your number on it. Good, that's exactly what I want. Uh, so there we go. They have added now that you can add uh, fam friends and family basically to, to your account 
and also you could add just a data sim uh, and you'd only pay for the data that you use uh, pretty pretty good uh, it's only available for certain devices though so you got to look at that look out for that that's new all right so activate oh that's my my phone number I also don't want to necessarily share that though with uh, with Google I can just block you so that is ready would you also if you also use a personal or exchange email address you can add it now uh, not now not now because I do that later I have lots of them uh, set up fingerprints should I do that yeah I will do that just to show you guys so Unlock with Fingerprint. Nexus Imprint uses your fingerprint to wake and unlock your phone, authorize purchases, or sign into apps. Be careful whose fingerprints you add. Any fingerprints added will be able to do these things. Your fingerprint may be less secure than a strong pattern or pin. Also, um, law enforcement agencies would be able to, uh, they have a history now of being able to coerce you into using your fingerprint for biometrics uh, security. Um, with uh in fact actually i'm going to go back and use a pin just for that reason a pin or pattern um so it's not really that important uh longer ah there it is so this is what i wanted to do with that and that's require pin to start device okay so this um you can further protect this device by requiring your PIN before it starts up. Until the device starts up, you can receive calls, messages, or notifications, including alarms. So that's good. That's good. Because that way you can power off the device if you're in a circumstance where you want to make sure that things are private for whatever reason. Again, you do you, I'll do me. And that way you can shut it off and they cannot coerce you to divulge information that you know they can coerce you to use something that you are like your fingerprints so or you know retina scans and things things of that nature so if you use an intellectual pass passcode passphrase whatever it happens to be then you're better off uh, at least you can be better off this also allows it to immediately encrypt the device uh, so let me uh, punch in my pin uh, I suggest using a pin that is uh, long, if at all possible, uh, because the longer that it is, the harder it is for them to crack it through sheer brute force. Okay, so notifications. Uh, when your device is locked, how do you want notifications to show? Um, I guess hide sensitive content contacts, please. Not that I'm going to have a whole lot of that. And you can change that, that setting later on. Uh, I do not want to restore. Set up as a new device. I'm going to do this completely from scratch, even though I've got all sorts of things here. So done. Uh, that way also it doesn't just download random crap that I have, happen to have that I didn't want to use. So get Google now. Um, yeah, I want Google now. And there it goes, restoring. And since I didn't do any of that, and immediately there is a system update. Let me see if I can, oh, it seems to have gone away. Okay, got it. And that's that's it, this is how it starts up. Uh, it is still downloading applications and getting things updated. Uh, but this this is how you set up a, uh, a new Android phone, uh, specifically a Google Fi Nexus 6P, which is what we have running here. Uh, I don't think it'll do landscape. No, it doesn't do landscape by default. Uh, you'd have to trick it to do things like that. So it's um, it's looking good. It's in good shape. That's a uh, Huawei, H-U-A-W-E-I. That's how you spell how you pronounce that, at least in English. Um, and there's the SIM door. It's, it's really quite a handsome phone. I like that it has dual front speakers. That was a, th that was a good thing for me. Uh, the Nexus 
the uh, I'm sorry, the Pixel XL and the uh, the standard Pixel, uh, they just have a down firing uh, single speaker. I want it coming at me because um, that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, especially, you know, it's a nice big screen and you can use it as a media device that way. Otherwise, you know, not so much. Um, the uh, the buttons are rather proud. They're they're up off off the surface in a big way. You can see it right there pretty easily. Uh, so they do catch on things. Um, so if you're just using it uh, naked, then you might have a, have a problem there. But put a case on it. It's an expensive phone. And uh, when I called uh, a company called You Break I Fix, uh, they, they did not have any parts available. So they basically said, nope, sorry, bye-bye. So I'm still looking for somebody to uh, to possibly be able to fix the other phone, and then maybe I can sell it for uh, for at least somewhat of what it's worth. I mean, it's only seven months old, so it's still a good phone. There's no reason to get rid of it just yet. So looks good, looks good. So I think um, I think at this point uh, I don't need to show you too much more, other than uh, you would slide down to get things. We'll do the uh, still completing setup Android system update. I'll go ahead and tell it to download that. And then it'll give me a chance later. It's still doing the uh, the full the full setup now, so I'm just gonna let it go. Alright, so I hope this has been uh, been informative and uh, and useful to you. I know that I had to go through it so I figured I'd go ahead and show you and it's also the conclusion of my little saga there with uh, with the breaking of my previous phone. Uh, hopefully today my Amazon orders for a new case uh, will arrive shortly. Um, so that way I'm, I'm good. I'm going to put a, another additional piece of glass over the top, which usually I do not do. In fact, uh, before they were just like, um, like basically a sticker, but now they actually have like glass sheets that you put down. Uh, you can tell how long it's been since I've done, done that. So um, it, it's, it's probably not going to matter at all, I hope, because I'm going to be very careful with this phone because it was an expensive, expensive mistake. So again, I hope that this has been helpful for you. And with that, I will, uh, I'll see you every Friday about 9.30 p.m. Eastern time on O'ReillyRadio.com. That's O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O.com. And uh, you'll be able to find all the links to the show and the things that we do there and also uh, links to the Cowan Corner blog, which is uh, where this uh, independent study series is living. And with that, have a great day.